Hi everyone, this is another bipolar video and this one's about visions, voices and hallucinations. Um, <clears throat> so um, probably some people might think that bipolar people, they, they wouldn't hear voices, they wouldn't get hallucinations. Um, but yeah, when you go through psychosis uh, with your mania in bipolar, it's um, definitely something that happens. So um, let's talk about one of my visions. Um, so one of my visions, I wasn't sure whether I was asleep or awake um, quite often with, well, one of the symptoms of bipolar mania is where you just don't sleep enough. And um, so I don't know if I was just lying there, not asleep, or if I was asleep having a kind of very vivid dream. But I remember that um, it was me, I had my dark flowing hair, it wasn't as long at the time. Um, and I was spinning around and I was inside a bread oven. I'd seen a bread oven because uh, we'd looked around some French houses. And you know that lovely kind of flattened top dome, really beautiful old brick one. And it was warmly lit and I can see it now. And I was just smiling, I was happy and I was in a white dress and it was just floating as I was spinning around. And it was as simple as that. Um, so for me that was kind of a, a beautiful vision. Um, and then I had visions that were much more negative, which I can go into later. Um, but, um, so another example is um, I was on the ferry and going back to England from France uh, and the TV was on, kind of behind my head almost, it was right there, it was really crammed, there were so many people on that ferry. Um, and. I think it was the Summer Olympics or something, and they were they were in what looks like um, an Aviron boat, which is what you know, like the rowing boats that they have in Henley on Thames, which I used to row. I can't remember what they're called now, um, but basically for for four people, a quad. Um, but they were kneeling, and then they were doing this kind of action with an oar. And I was like, what are they doing? It made me laugh out loud. I just thought that looks so ridiculous. <laughs> And um, I think actually what I was saying was real, <laughs> they do do things like that, uh, but in my mind I was thinking is this a vision, is this a strange vision and it just kind of made me laugh. Um, but you know a few moments later um, I was looking around me um, at other people kind of near me in this kind of sitting area um, and people's faces, they were starting to morph and look a little bit like me. So I would notice, you know, the shape of their face and was looking like my face. And then suddenly, there was that, but then the sounds. So the sounds that I was hearing, their voices actually were talking their words in their conversation was what they were having, um, but in my voice. So it sounded like me talking. And I was like, I was looking really closely what is going on? Like, because that's not me over here, over there. I'm here. Why do they sound like me? Why do they look a bit like me? I was like, what's going on? Um, and then a few moments later, because um, Robin wasn't with me, literally, I was just with Heidi, and he'd gone to um, go and get some food because um, we we hadn't eaten for a while, and he had to go and get something, and he had to leave me, even though he knew that I was in not the right state of mind um, but you know we couldn't go hungry so um, Heidi kind of kept her eye on me I think um, and uh, then even though he wasn't there and I couldn't see him sitting opposite me and I couldn't see him in the queue he was far enough away that I couldn't see him but I could hear his voice in my head so he was literally just saying my name. Every so often he would just say, Joe, Joe. And it was his voice very clearly. And actually I had heard it before um, at the campsite, like a day or day and a half or two days before that, I'd heard someone say my name. I wasn't quite sure at the time if it was Robin's voice or not, but I, I could hear it. But you know how sometimes when you're sane and normal, um, you can kind of um, if there's lots of people talking in a room or um, you can kind of mix the words up and the sounds up 
and it can sound like another word. You can kind of imagine what the word is and you, it can, you kind of make it up in your own mind. And I wonder if it's almost a bit like that, kind of the sounds that were in the room are just kind of being formed into whatever I want it to say in my head. I don't know. I don't know how um, hearing voices actually works, uh, what goes on in the brain um, to make that happen. But it's uh, the strangest thing and I'm glad that it was not um, anything horrible, horrible being said to me or that I could hear. You know, that would be really scary. Um, I don't know what it's like for other people, but that's what it was like for me. Just literally my name being said in my husband's voice. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, um, another hallucination or vision, I suppose, to do with psychosis it could be... Um, so I came back from La Boulangerie having bought um, some bread and I just had a ridiculously long conversation with a friend on my mobile phone to England to her mobile which cost a lot of money I found out afterwards but I was scared and I was worried and she was the only one I could think to speak to and um, yeah I told her about what I was feeling and what was going on and I didn't know what was going on but then on the drive back up the hill to this house we were staying in um, I had this um, really strong realisation and it made me stop the car and I stopped the car I think I turned the engine off and I just sat there and having had this flash of realisation which I'll tell you in a minute um, I just burst out crying and I was crying loads I just didn't know what to do with myself I felt like it was a really important thing that um, I had to tell Robin and I had to tell everyone I knew and, uh, and basically it was this so this was my story um, that what had to happen for this planet, for, the, uh, for this earth, to be um, a content, happy place um, within our universe was that firstly, me, I had to kill myself, so in whatever way, shape or form, I had to die, and then from that happening, um, around me would be um, Robin and Heidi, so they would then kill themselves, so that would be then three of us gone, and then the people that um, that they know and love would be just in a next concentric circle out of that they would kill themselves and a, a bit like you know Facebook or like how people it just multiplies so everyone you know um, who knows everyone else um, would just everyone in circles would kill themselves around the planet around the earth until um, every human being was gone I didn't think about animals or anything I think they're probably fine because they're not harming the planet at all. It was just humans. So they can all go, and then the world would be a happy place. And for me that was the most important thing, and I just had to tell Robin. So I did. I went back and I told him. And he was just like... What? <laughs> uh, not in a funny way either. That, that was the moment when he realised that um, something was seriously wrong and he didn't know who I was anymore and uh, you know where was his wife where'd she where where's she gone <laughs> um, and he could he just kind of flipped out and it really freaked me out so I kind of ran off to the other end of the garden a bit and I think I rang did I ring my sister I can't remember if I actually spoke to someone but just previous to that moment I'd been in a cafe in town um, and there was a TV on and I hadn't seen the news or anything the whole time I'd been away because we'd been camping and um, on the news it said that, um, what's her name? Oh that singer oh, she committed suicide in 2011 she had the most amazing voice and uh, she had drugs, alcohol problem like loads of singers do. Amy Winehouse, that's the one. So I found out that she died and I was like, what? A girl so young, so beautiful, so talented, just kills herself basically through addiction and all that. How can that be? That totally just kind of, what's going on in this world? It's so messed up. 
and then at the same time, that same summer, um, England was having all sorts of riots and people were smashing in shop windows and there was just all sorts of craziness going um, all over like the north, the south, everywhere in England this stuff was happening and I was just like, what is going on? <laughs> Nothing makes sense and um, even when I was younger I didn't ever want to read newspapers even though uh, my mum really wanted me to read the news and know what was going on in politics and world news and local news. I wasn't interested and uh, the same with the radio. I didn't switch on the TV um, to look at the news. Um, to me it was all just kind of negative input and for me that negative input I didn't need it in my life. I, you know, I just wanted to live my own life and to live my life in a way that um, I could live it in the happiest way possible. So why should I every day pick up a newspaper and, and filter it in through reading or filter it in through visions on a TV screen or filter it in through hearing it on the radio? What's the point? Okay, maybe I don't know a lot of things about what's going on uh, and I would, hear, I would hear about it from other people talking about it um, and if I felt it was something I wanted to know about I'd go and find out about it. But general input of negative information is, um, is not something I go looking for. <laughs> um, and I still don't really. It's probably one of the reasons why I'm here in France, um, in the Pyrenees, where it's quiet, it's peaceful, nature is around me, um, there's an awful lot of beauty, um, I'm close to the environment, um, I'm around some wonderful people that are really down to earth, lots of farmers, people in touch with the earth, um, just genuine, kind, lovely people. Um, for them, yeah, maybe they have politics in their life and things, but you know, at the moment with my French I don't really talk about that kind of thing because I can't really, I don't have that kind of vocabulary. Um, and Robin, my husband, he does look at his pad and he does look at the news and Donald Trump and all that that's going on at the moment. Um, I hear about it and I know it's going on. Um, but for me, it's just a bit like... <laughs> I know the world is completely messed up. And for me, it's there. But um, I don't really need it to come in to me and for me to worry about it or me to think about it um, I know that the planet and the world and the people in its own way will find its way in whatever shape or form that will be whether it's through destruction or whether it's um, through some kind of finding of peace and joy generally throughout the planet probably destruction first um, but, you know, I'm seriously into yoga and um, that's the path I'm going down because for me that is the most important thing. And if I can be um, the happiest, most joyful, content person here within my family and within the realms of the people that I meet in my life, um, then that is going to be a positive outward effect. Um, and I feel that that's going to be much more beneficial uh, for me and my surrounding people um, than to kind of soak in all this crap. <laughs> yeah. What was I talking about at the beginning? I've totally digressed. <laughs> Visions, voices and hallucinations. <sighs> yeah. And I think um, my, my second episode, interestingly, was also about saving the world in a different way and that was about, um, I remember seeing this program about um, people coming out of uh, poverty and it was really interesting, there was lots of graphs and maths um, all about, um, you know, how you come out of poverty and, you know, how, how the population's rising and all of that and basically the first step out of poverty, apart from having a pair of shoes, is having a bicycle and I was like, oh my god, yes. How simple is that? Bicycles. 
loads of people have got them in uh, in the Western world. Loads of people haven't got them when they're really poor. And I was like, oh, maybe we should just form like a really cheap bicycle. How can how can we create a bicycle? Maybe people can learn to make their own bicycles. And in in my head, this was just like spiraling. And then I was thinking, okay, the most sustainable bicycle that there can be. Um, you know, maybe the frames made of bamboo. Maybe. Um, Maybe the rubber can be, you know, the tyres can be solid rubber, so then you don't need a pump to pump them up all the time, they just be solid and they'll never, they'll never need to be re-pumped. Um, you know, so, so low, um, what's it called, low maintenance bicycles, so you have it and then you have it for life. And then even if something goes wrong with it, the person who gets the bike can easily fix it. Or there's a kind of community of people that help each other fix their own bikes and all this. And I thought it can be a kind of cooperative of, you know, these people over here, where they make rubber, they have rubber trees, you know, they can deal with the tyres over here, they they can deal with all the bamboo part of it, and then you can work together in this huge cooperative, and it's going to save the world. <laughs> save the world. And I even contacted um, uh, engineers I knew, and um, other people that I thought could help with this project idea. And, um, and then when I got back from Paris with my friend, um, I quickly went back on a lanzapine and uh, dulled myself down because I was getting high and starting to hallucinate again and the ceiling was dripping down on me and uh, everything was going crazy again. Um, <clears throat> but, <sighs> yeah, it's strange. I wonder if I were to have another episode, which I don't wish for myself in any way, shape or form that it would be always relating to making this world a better place in some way um, and just maybe that general that feeling of worry that this planet is not in a happy place and that maybe I'm ultra sensitive that I can feel this negativity and maybe that's why I've never wanted it in my life and I've always kind of shied away a bit from this kind of negative element you know if I don't have to have it then know I'll um I'll leave it out of my life thank you very much um, and I, I definitely was conflict averse um, to do with the people in my life in the past uh, now you know if you listen to my my uh, mindfulness film that I did um, a few back um, I talk about how I can now deal with conflict and I can go into any situation without any problem um, and I'm full throttle with whatever I'm doing, whether it's, you know, in a situation that's positive or negative. Um, but yeah, that's obviously clearly been a concern of mine. And um, but I do hear that, you know, other people that have bipolar and have these episodes um, are thinking about these grand schemes, these grand ideas to be helpful, um, to help the world. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think we'll leave it at that. So if you enjoyed that and you want to continue watching these, then subscribe and press the like button. Thank you very much.